Hello, this is Dubious Insights, and I'm going to show you a three-body calculation in Python. So ultimately, what I'm what I did here is I have um, is I wanted to plot up Earth's orbit Earth's orbit to show that the three-body calculation would work. Obviously, the yellow is the sun, the blue is the Earth, and this is a simulation of Earth's orbit. Um, nothing's a scale, but this is Earth at the correct distance and velocity from Earth. Uh, from the sun and this is all coded up using python so i'm going to show you the back end of this not the actual plotting which i did in manum but the back end where it's calculating the position of the earth and the reason i demonstrated on earth is that i'm going to later not this video but later use it to um you know calculate multiple not just the earth and the sun but the solar system asteroids what have you once you have three body cal coded up you can use it for any orbits so there's a couple key things in this back end, it's right around 100 lines of code. Um, and a couple of them are key. So what we have, we have every body, I call, you know, a planet, a sun, every body has a position, a velocity, and a mass. And they all act on every other body. So the first thing you need to do is you need to um, get the force from one body acting on the other. So the way this works, the equation for force is uh, the gravitational constant, big G, times the mass of the first body, times the mass of the second body, divided by the distance between them squared. Um, it's easier if you do this all in metric. So I'm using meters and seconds and meters per second um, and kilograms for all my units. Otherwise, if you're trying to do it in pounds and feet it's definitely doable but it's just a little bit easier in metric um so i have a class for a given body it's like i have a class for earth or the sun and the first thing i do is i find the vector from one body to the other body so that is their position i'm using numpy uh their position is a numpy array and i use a floating point type so I can get the vector between them uh, just by subtracting the NumPy arrays. Then I get the distance between them. It's the normal, uh, it's the magnitude of that array. And then I get the normalized vector. So this is the direction it's pointing. Um, this is direct, if this is, if, if I'm inside the earth class, then this is the direction to the sun. And then finally, I calculate this, the magnitude of force, which is g times the mass times the other mass divided by the distance squared. And you multiply the magnitude by the vector, and you get the force vector. And so this is the force acting on, this is, for instance, the force acting on Earth from the sun. So we have two things going on. We have a class for each body. This is, we have a body class. This is the sun, the Earth. And we have another class which holds all the bodies. So, um, we start at a given time, we start at time zero. And then we take a time step to calculate the next position. And the number of time steps we take is something that we, that we can decide. Here, I'm saying that I wanna, cal I wanna run for 365.256 days, this is exactly one year. Uh, well, it's one year to this many decimal places. This is the number of seconds in a given day. And I wanna run exactly one year. And here I'm saying I'm taking 500 time steps per day. So I'm calculating this 500 times. Um, so, we go through, we figure out what the delta time, what the time step is. So this is if there's however many seconds per day and we take 500 time steps per day, then that's the uh, elapsed time between time steps. We update the time. And now, now the next thing we do is we update the force on every object. So we sum up the force on every object, update all forces. So what that is, is we start I have an array of the sun and the earth, but this is only two bodies, but we could have three or 20 or 2000, although this is, I have this as an n squared problem, so I 
wouldn't work up into, it'll probably work in the hundreds and the thousands, but not the millions of bodies. Um, and so you go through, and so for the first body, you get the force um, on that body. Let's say it's a, let's say your first body is the sun. You get the force acting on the sun from all of the planets and all the moons and all the asteroids and what have you. Um, and the force you you add all those up, and then you also apply the net, the opposite force to the uh, to the planet. So if the if Earth is exerting a million newtons of force on the sun, then the sun's exerting a million newtons of force in the other direction on the Earth. So you update all the force, you update all the forces for a given time step, and then you update all the positions. Um, so we saw getting a force, which is this F equals G times M1, M2, R squared, where G is the gravitational constant. Now update position. So force position uh, is velocity times time plus one half acceleration times time squared. So position equals D equals V times T velocity times time plus 0 0.5 times A times T cap squared. Um, so where here is V is the velocity at the beginning of the time step. Um, so that's what this is position plus equals the velocity, the delta time, dt is t, times velocity. And now we get the acceleration. Acceleration is force divided by mass. Um, and then your position is, the change in velocity is uh, that mass, or the acceleration times the dt. And this is basically the one half times dt squared, because I already baked into dt there. And then you also update the velocity for the next time step. So effectively, you, the equation you're trying to implement is uh, position equals, I guess, position equals velocity times time plus one half acceleration times time squared, or this is, I guess, change of position. Delta, delta position. And so once you've done all the forces, once you've updated all the forces, then you go and update all the positions. Then that, and then you're done with a single time step. And then you do this, in this case, 500 times per day, and you do it for 365.256 days, and you've got one year. Um, so I did this, uh, and I started out, I implicitly started out with 30 time steps because my uh, code was updating at 30 hertz or 30 frames per second. Um, and when you do that, this is what you get. So we get this earth plotted. It goes around, I'll skip it forward a little bit. And now we'll zoom in. And it is, as you can see, not directly on top of the other, of each other, which is a little disconcerting. I found that this was about one half of a percent different. Um, in terms of the location that it actually ended up at versus where it should be was about half a percent, which is, you know, not that bad, but it's not, you know, wouldn't be good enough to say hit Mars with the spacecraft unless you wanted to actually hit Mars with the spacecraft. Um, half a percent in space is pretty big. And this took me a little while to figure out. Uh, ultimately, I thought it was precision. I thought I was my floating point numbers weren't precise enough, and that was not the case, at least not the primary factor. And ultimately, I figured it out once I changed from using 30 time steps per day to one time step per day. So this is the plot when I'm using one time step per day, and we can see what's going to happen. Um, yeah, ultimately, this is, you know, much worse. It's not half a percent off. It's five or seven percent off uh, the one time step per day the it's not even really an orbit this is kind of a spiral I was in theory I was plotting three full orbits but it's just going to keep spiraling out 
And so this is, you know, one time step per day is not good. 30 time steps per day is half a percentage off. Um, I found, I went to 5,000 time steps per day and that was pretty good. It was within, it was certainly within closer than half the half a percent. Um, it's still, there's still some things off, but I think we're talking maybe hundredths or thousandths of a percent here, which is close enough for anything I'm going to do. Close enough for me to put this on YouTube. Honestly, you know, half a percent isn't horrible for what I'm doing. Uh, as soon as I figured out what the actual issue was, uh, that it wasn't the, there wasn't the free body math. It was time steps. Um, so this is, that's the code that does behind it. Of course, you have to actually start with something. And so the key kind of key numbers, I pulled them off a couple Wikipedia and a couple other websites. Uh, let's see, what did I get? There's a gravitational constant. There's the mass of the sun. There's the uh, semi-major axis of earth, which is an ellipse, not a circle, the eccentricity of earth. Um, So this is the gravitational constant. It's in Newton meter squared, kilogram squared. I don't know what, that's kind of a weird unit, but that's what it is. And then we create, we create the sun position, which has a mass of what? 1.98 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. And I just stuck it at zero, zero, zero with zero velocity. Um, the earth has a position at perihelion of right around 1.47 times 0.1.1 four, seven point oh nine nine point, sorry, this number, uh, times a million kilometers. And it's semi-major axis is a little bit bigger. 1.49.6 times a million kilometers. And here a million kilometers is 10 to the six for the million and 10 to the third change from kilometers to meters. And that gives us, this ultimately gives us the earth's speed at its closest approach in meters per second. And this is the earth's mass in kilograms. Um, so then we get the earth's position. So this earth's perihelion occurs right around January 3rd, although it changes January 2nd, January 4th. Um, and so when you plot these, when you plug these two in, that's what ultimately gives you, uh, this, although, like I said, I don't have the actual plotting in this code because I ran out of space in my snippet I'm allowed to share. Uh, but this is the back end and then you can run it for a given period of time um, and then just plot it using, I use Manum, but you can use Pygame, what have you. The other thing I don't have shown here is I calculating all these time steps and I'm not doing anything with them besides reporting it out at the end, uh, but you would probably want to save them and use them to plot. Anyway, this is Doobies Insights and this is how you do a uh, three body calculation in Python.